Oh, oh, we're going, we're going too fast. Oh, she's burning up. Oh, God, get rid of the booster. Oh, God, oh, no. Oh, dear. All right, let's try this one again. Go, Greg. Keep going, Greg. Oh, dear, abort, abort. Oh, God. I can remember being a young lad and struggling to get into orbit and Kerbal Space Program in Hearts Edition. In fact, uh, these are some of the monstrosities I made in my early days of my KSP career. God, why have I got so many vector engines on that? That is way too much. And that is absolutely not how you use a fairing. Can you fly, Bobby? Probably not. That rocket, I think I used this rocket to get to Duna. I mean, it's mass overkill. And again, that rocket's about four or five times too big for what you need to get to Mimus. Now, before we go into the vehicle assembly building, once you're on this screen, what I want you to do, if you're on PS4 that is, is press options, go down to settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom, where you'll see an option called advanced tweakables. Now I've got mine enabled already. If you haven't done this already, yours will say disabled like that. Just toggle that to enable, press circle to go back, and then save and exit. And what Advanced Tweakables does is it allows you the ability to stop your rockets from sneaking like an asshole as it's going up through the atmosphere. All right, so go into the vehicle assembly building, the VAB. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a rocket called LKO Orbiter, which is Low Carbon Orbit Orbiter. It's gonna be a three-stage rocket that can get us up into orbit and then safely come back down again. It's gonna be a single seater. Now, what I did there was I clicked the command module and then holding L1, press right on the D-pad. That'll turn the command module 90 degrees to the right. And the reason I do that is I much prefer pressing down on the analog control stick rather than pressing the right. I just find it easier and more consistent to do that. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it's just something that I do. All right, now put the parachute on top and then you'll see here, auto strut disabled. This is what's gonna stop your rockets from snaking around and this is what turning on advanced tweakables does. There's three different options here. Heaviest part, root part, which would be the command module, or grandparent part, which is just the previous part that you put on. I always set to grandparent part, and I do this for pretty much every single part that I attach to the rocket. So there again, auto struck, grandparent part. Now, later, we don't need all 200. In fact, you'll probably never ever need all 200, so we'll put that down and save a lot of weight, and uh, we'll, we'll do the staging at the end. So then attach our drogue shoes. These will help us slow down, do our initial deceleration as we come through the atmosphere and slow us down before we open the main parachute at the top there. The couplers, now I always put it right next to the heat shield. You can have a little shroud there, but you don't need it. Again, auto strut, grandparent part. Do this for every single part that you attach. Get into the habit of doing this. And then here what I'll do is uh, I'll add a fuel tank and an engine. Make it grey so it looks nice. And again, auto strike grandparent part. And then we'll use the uh, Terrier engine. You're going to be using this engine a lot as you play KSP. And to make sure we don't completely run out of electric charge, I'm going to put a fuel cell on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip it in so it's not jutting out so awkwardly like that. Using the move tool up here in the top right. So you've got placement tool, move, rotate and reroute. We're going to need the first two here. So click on move tool, click on the part you want to move, hold down R1 and then use the left analog stick to move it. Yeah, attach the decoupler there. It's important again, auto struck, grandparent part. I'm going to make this rocket a bit wider. Purely for aesthetic reasons, you don't have to. This fuel tank might be a bit 
big, but you know, we can uh, can change that later if that's the case. Not many engines that are the correct width. This fuel tank, but this one will do. That's going to be our second stage engine. We'll just uh, click on the uh, command module there, move it up a little bit, holding down the right trigger. I'm using the left analog stick, so I've got enough room to do the uh, first booster stage. first booster stage tends to be larger than the ones that come after it to push us up through the thickest part of the atmosphere from the ground so about I think it's about eight or nine kilometers is the thicker part of the atmosphere and curving I will use the skiff engine second variant so it fits on now I know already that's probably not gonna have enough thrust enough power to it to lift the whole rocket the way i can check that is by using this delta v tool down here click cross on that and the little green arrow in the top right there means it's pinned so it will always be up there and what i have is i have delta v thrust to weight ratio and burn time toggle to on so when i click show all on the right hand side of the screen there you'll see the information comes up and I can see thrust to weight ratio 0.64 so that's actually not enough to get us off the launch pad to get off the launch pad you have to have one or more so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some fuel tanks and radially mount them to the side of the bottom of the rocket we'll add more boosters I'll pick a fuel tank change the color on it purely for aesthetic reasons set my symmetry to four put four of those on again auto strut get in the habit of doing that and then we'll go with um, no we won't use relying we'll go with the swivel don't need that much thrust extra thrust here put four of those on and make sure these five engines are going off at the same time all together and then back to the delta v tool show all all right 1.74 thrust to weight ratio that's a little too much, so we can uh, turn the thrust down on these swivels a little bit. I tend to go for a thrust to weight ratio of about 1.2 to 1.4. And primarily the reason I do that is because I don't want to have to mess around with the throttle controls too much as the rocket's going up. I can just leave it mostly at full throttle. And then we're just going to put some aerodynamic parts on here. Hold down L1 and use the D-pad to turn them around like that. Strut those and then using the tool oh, let's get rid of this let's hide this so we can see the top right corner more and then using the move tool click the part you want to move hold down R1 and then using the left analog stick move those down so the exhaust nozzles are in line and then just clip those in so it looks a bit better and a bit more like a rocket okay I don't like there's an exhaust sort of pointing straight at the main engine so we're going to rotate these around using the rotate tool and back to placement tool put more parts on if I need to and I can see the total delta V readout there it's 4600 odd that's probably too much for what we need if I remember correctly you need about 3300 delta V to get into the orbit of Kerbin. And so there's three, using the delta V tool, there's three settings, there's sea level, altitude, and vacuum. So as you're going up, the atmosphere is going to get thinner, meaning your thrust to weight ratio and the amount of delta V. And if you don't know, delta V basically just gives you an idea of how far your rocket can go before it has to come back or runs out of fuel. So I've got too much fuel in the second stage there, so I'm going to take that big fuel tank out and replace it with a smaller one and 
and show all again on the Delta V tool. And uh, in terms of altitude, you set what altitude you want. I use 10 kilometers just as a sort of one size fits all benchmark. So arguably too much fuel in the first stage, so I'm going to do the same thing again, just take that big fuel tank and place it with a smaller one. And then see how things look. Oh, it's annoying when that happens, yeah, we like swapping out parts it tends to mess up your staging, so always check your staging as you go, before, well, check your staging definitely before you launch. Alright, so thrust to weight ratio on the first stage is quite high. Well, actually, that's because I'm in the wrong... I want to be on sea level here, not altitude. There you go. And the second stage thr thrust to weight ratio is definitely too high. So we'll change that in a sec. So, yeah, put the thrust down on our central booster there, the skiff. Get that thrust to weight ratio down. That way she won't take off from the launch pad too quickly. We won't be going through the thicker atmosphere too fast. Well, that's the idea anyway. All right, and then checking the second stage. Thrust to weight ratio 3.34. That's definitely too much. We can definitely reduce the thrust on this one quite a bit. On our Bobcat engine here. Might be surprising the Bobcat engine really is for first stage but I like using it for a second stage engine because it's a little bit weak for a first stage 1.44 that'll do well, well, well let's go down to 1.36 why not then check our third and final stage which will be in the vacuum of space 1.5 that's all right don't really need to change anything really that's fine Right, and then down the bottom left, that's the center of mass overlay that I just turned on there. One next to that center of thrust. Well, I mean, basically, when you're building just a straight up rocket, your center, you don't really have to worry about this, but you want your center of thrust to go through the middle of your center of mass. Because if it's not going through the middle, then your rocket's just going to spin through the air, and you don't want that. Right, now I turned on the aerodynamic overlay. And I don't want it to be that high. My understanding is you basically want that blue and black ball. You want that blue and black ball to be just below the yellow and black center of mass. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to aerodynamic parts. I'll just put some basic sort of winglet things on it. Try and get that blue marker to go down. Oh yeah, set my symmetry to four. I did that using triangle to bring up the circle menu. Right, I can't get it under the center of mass, but for the first 10, 20 seconds of the launch, we're gonna be going straight up anyway, so it's not gonna make too much of a difference. And as the fuel depletes, our center of mass will go up and it'll be above the blue ball anyway. So I'm not too concerned about that. And a secondary function now of advanced tweakables. Whenever I put any sort of wings or anything like that on a rocket, not only do I auto strut to ground parent part, I also turn rigid attachment on, just because sometimes when you, you attach things like that, it tends to uh, flap about almost like it's on a hinge. I don't want that. All right, another great way to make your rocket more stable as it's going up through the air is to use reaction wheels. Now our third and final stage with that white command pod, that has its own reaction wheel anyway, so I'm just gonna add an extra one to the second stage. Yeah, it's just gonna reduce the chances of our rocket tumbling end over end as we're going up. Right, so using the Delta V tool, set to sea level 3,713 meters per second. As I said at the beginning, we only really need about 3,300, so this is more than enough to get us into orbit. In fact, it's probably enough. It's probably enough to get us to the moon and back, well, to the moon and back. Although, not nearly enough to land on it. Alright, so I'm feeling happy here. I think this will do. Oh, well, actually, just uh, 
for newer players this is totally unnecessary but these are called Werner engines they're like RCS thrusters but they use liquid fuel and oxidizer they're great to give your rocket some extra stability and control totally unnecessary for a rocket this size but if you're really struggling to get into orbit I do recommend using these and putting them as high up as you can really What I failed to notice here is that the uh, the staging is wrong. The central boost on the first stage is moved up there, and I don't want that. I want to move that back down. That's why the thrust to, thrust to weight ratio changed there. And so I'm going to change the thrust limiter back to what it was. Always keep an eye on your staging before you move to the launch pad. just going to check everything here is fine I'm not going to jettison an engine before I actually use it yeah everything looks fine well up here at the top yeah, on our final stage this is for after we've deorbited and coming back through the atmosphere I want the drogue chutes to go first that's the parachute with the two there yep drag those down and then I want the main chute to open next and the last thing I want in my staging is the heat shield. We're going to jettison that to lose some weight. And that helps slow us down as we come down and splash down in water. Yeah, so one last check. Everything looks fine. Remember, as we're going up, the atmosphere will reduce, the amount of gravity will reduce. And that's what those three atmosphere stages are designed to help you figure out sea level, altitude, and vacuum. What a godsend that Delta V calculator was. Alright, we're going to use Jebediah. Save a rocket. Oh, I've already got an LKO orbiter that I made probably a couple of months ago. For the purpose of this video, we'll just overwrite that. And now do the launch pad. Alright, here we are on the launch pad. Now, the first thing you want to do. Well, if you're a brand new player, you, you might. At this stage, you might want to check your staging again on the left hand side just to double check. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press L3 to toggle on the mouse cursor. I'm going to put SAS on. You're not going to get up there if you don't have that on. And there's that Werner engine, which is technically an RCS engine. So you want to toggle RCS on to make sure those are working. And now down here is our throttle indicator. Now, if I just press up on the D pad, it goes all the way up. Press down, goes all the way down. If I want more control over it, I hold down L1 and then use the D pad up and down. So you can gradually thrust up, gradually thrust down. But since we're launching off the launch pad, gravity is at its highest. We're just going to throttle all the way up. Press L3 again to toggle off the mouse and then press X or cross, whichever you prefer to call it. And up we go. I'm going to wait until we get to about 15 meters per second. If you look down in the bottom left corner there, there's uh, the nav ball the blue. And I'm just very, very gently tapping down on the left analog stick. Not all the way down. I'm only going about 10% of the way and I just want to gently nudge it up. And if we look at the nav ball, that bright yellow marker, that's our prograde marker. As we're going through the thickest part of the atmosphere, you don't want... The, uh, the orange reticule, which is showing you where your rocket's pointing. You don't want to stray outside of that yellow circle. And what I'm trying to do is I want to get us over to 45 degrees around the time we hit an altitude of 10,000. And that upside down, I think that's 90. Yeah, that's the 45 degree angle that I'm going for. We've hit 10,000, so... Not the most ideal or efficient launch, but it doesn't matter if you're struggling to get into orbit. Don't worry too much about that. Just get the rocket over to 45 degrees. Because what you want to avoid, you don't want to go straight up, get out of the atmosphere, and then try and go across horizontally to get into orbit. That's massively inefficient. You want to angle your way over as you're going through the atmosphere. 
Now we're starting to heat up a bit. What that's letting me know is that we're going a little bit too fast. But it's alright, we're going to slow down as I dump the first stage here. So I can see from that blue line, it's saying oh, perhaps this is 51,000. So activate second stage, throttle up, and I want to get the rocket over horizontally. So again, if you look at the nav ball, see, I want it to be 50-50, blue and orange. If the reticule's in the blue, that means you're pointing up towards the sky. If it's in the orange, you're basically pointing at the ground. So as you're launching, you don't really need to look at the rocket. You should really be looking at the nav ball more than anything else. So as you can see, perhaps this is still going up. But what's happening is that blue line is now going to stretch and sort of wrap its way around Kerbin. Uh, looking at the nav ball again, I'm trying to keep this orange reticule here on the white line to keep it horizontal. Don't worry if you stray from it a little bit, it doesn't matter too much. It doesn't have to be exactly on it all the time. Just check how much fuel we've got left there. We've got quite a bit of fuel left in there. Here you go, 65, 66. We'll go up, we'll get to a nice safe orbit of about 90 kilometers. Seventy, and you see that blue marker there, AP apoapsis, it's moving around Kerbin, so we're getting into a more um instead of just going straight up and then straight down again, we're actually gonna go into orbit. All the way up to about 90, and then cut the engine, fall down, pressing down on the D-pad. Haven't got much fuel left in there, and we don't need her anyway. We've got plenty of uh, Delta V in the third stage, 2,271. It's more than enough, so we'll just dump the second stage, pressing cross or X. And then make sure your throttle is down before you activate the third stage engine. Because we don't want that burning yet. I'm going to wait till we approach our apoapsis and then burn prograde and uh, I'm going to use a manoeuvre node to do that because it's a lot easier press R1 to get to this prograde marker and then press up on the left analog stick and you'll see those orange oh, look, those orange markers they spin round and what I want is for them to be roughly oh, this is so hard it's so sensitive. There you go. That'll do. 1991. That's fine. You'll almost never get a perfectly circular orbit. Don't worry about it. And then I'm going to use the navigation computer. Because we're out in the atmosphere. We're at 75,000 kilometers up now. So that's fine. Well, I'm going to turn on the fuel cell first. To make sure we don't run out of electricity. And then using the navigation computer. I'm going to go to maneuver. Which is the top right. We've got a few minutes before we get to our actual maneuver node. It's going to time warp a little bit. I can see the burn time there at the bottom of the uh, nav ball, bottom right. Seven seconds. Now, what you want to do, you want to take your burn time, half it. Well, the burn time is seven seconds. So I want to wait until node in T minus gets to about three, four seconds, and then I'm going to start burning up. Just as a general rule of thumb, whatever the burn time is, halve it. So if your burn time is 10 seconds, wait until you're five seconds away from the maneuver node, then start burning. That's the more efficient way of doing it. I mean, the game's pretty forgiving. You don't have to do it. You can burn exactly on zero if you want. It's not going to make too much of a difference, but as you're going into planetary, it sort of does. The further out you're going, the more of a significant difference it makes. Turn the lights on so Jebediah is not in darkness. Have a little look in there. I think all of these instruments actually, uh, well, the reader instrument readouts actually do correlate one to one with what's going on in the game. 
And I think you can really control the rocket from there. I wouldn't recommend trying to control a rocket from there. Right, and we are in a stable orbit. That's how it's done. If you're struggling to get through the earliest part of the atmosphere, you're probably going too fast, and you're probably straying far too far away from the prograde marker on the nav ball. That's the yellow, bright yellow marker there. Yellow Jebediah. Just rotate you around so you're not sideways. Yeah, okay, go and get out there. I love the little expressions on Kerbal's faces. So yeah, you you can cut away some of the command module using that if you go down on the bottom right. And we can EVA here. I'm not actually going to do an EVA flight. I'm just showing you what pressing the EVA button does. It's uh, extra vehicular activity. In other words, going outside. Right, so we're in orbit. So it's done. Now uh, let's show you how to deorbit. Considering this is a YouTube video, I want to land on the daylight side of the planet. So I'm just going to time warp around here. And I'm going to just make a, a quick maneuver node. I just uh, want to make sure I actually splash down. I don't want to land on land. It's not really designed for that. So I'm using anti-normal to move our orbital trajectory down a bit. So it's going over ocean. And then pressing L1. To switch to prograde marker. And I'm just going to pull that back a bit. We'll go over the Kerbal Space Center as we come in and land in the ocean. Probably about halfway between uh, the continent of what looks like Africa there and uh, the next landmass. Don't know what it's called. So again, using the navigational computer set to maneuver. How long we've got four, about four and a half minutes, so we'll time warp a bit. At this day, I can only go four arrows, I can't go five arrows, we're not high enough up for that. Not that you really want to when you're only a few minutes away from your maneuver, stick to about three arrows. Burn time of 12 seconds, so we're going to start burning six seconds away from the maneuver node. Oh, I thought about I thought about time warping there because I'm just so impatient, but you know what? Play it safe. We'll wait. We'll just wait ten odd seconds. Seven, six, boom. Now the camera moves there that basically lets you know you're no longer in orbit, you're gonna be coming down. You're on a you're now a suborbital flight. Oh yeah, and when I do burns, I as I'm getting towards the end of the burn, I start throttling down just to make sure I don't overdo it. And then before we separate, I'm going to radial in. And we're going to detach. Well, I'm going to wait until we get to uh, an altitude of about 75,000 before I detach the command module and we come back into the atmosphere. And uh, I go radial in just to make sure we're not entirely on the same. I don't. I don't like doing it retrograde, where it's like you potentially you could hit that fuel tank as you're like it might slow down faster than you do, so you might hit it. So I go radial in, and then just before we enter the atmosphere, go retrograde to make sure the heat shield is taking the brunt of the aerodynamic forces and keep Jebediah safe. Now we're in atmosphere. I can time warp to four times speed. Just so this video isn't over half an hour long. If you're new to the game and you're not sort of you're not familiar with the orbiting, I wouldn't time warp here. I just I'm gonna press square on the ablator there so you can see how much the ablator's going down. We've got plenty of ablator here. We've got more than more than we need. Turbulence is increasing a bit here. Jebedo is looking a little bit worried. Yeah, but no, he's over the worst, but he's fine now. Oops. 
slowing down. Plasma's gone. I'm just going to go back to normal time there. Look, there's the drogue parachutes. They're both white. If those are red, do not activate them because they will shred. You're basically going through. You're going too fast through the atmosphere. and they'll, they'll shred if those icons on the left there are red. And I'm going to wait until we get about 5,000 in altitude. There you go. The drogue shoots slowing us down quite drastically. They Cheat forces went up. They probably went up high enough that if you have a, if you have the ability for your kerbals to pass out turned on, they probably would have passed out there. But it's fine. That's why I never have that turned on. And then, because we're descending fairly slowly, I'm going to time warp a bit. Again, if you're brand new KSBA, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I'm only doing it just to make the video a bit shorter. And then when we get down to about. About 500 meters above the water, I'll pop the main parachute open. Boom, there it goes. Now that main parachute is basically providing all of the drag. The drogue chutes aren't providing any more drag. So what I can do, I can just cut these. And it won't make a difference to our uh, rate of descent. I do that just because I think it looks better. They've served their purpose, don't need them anymore. And then we're going to jettison the heat shield just to lose a tiny extra bit of weight. Just slow us down, probably by probably only by about half a meter a second. But it's kind of more how they do it in real life, that's why I do that. And I'm going to time warp up. I mean, at this point, we're going so slow, it doesn't matter if, if I forget to uh, come out of time warp. We, we're not going to die. And there you go, splash down. And that, my friends, is how you get into orbit and deorbit and come back safely. I'm just going to recover vessel. There you go. Done. If you enjoyed that, I've got another tutorial video about how to rendezvous in orbit and dock. But, I mean, if, you, if you're at the point where you're struggling to get into orbit, give it a couple of months before you try that. All right, friends, until next time.